This week, CBS News and our print partner, USA Today, launched a network-wide special series, CBS Reports, Children of the Recession. Today, we're hosting a very special early show town hall meeting with children ranging in age from 11 to 18. All of them have been directly touched by the current economic downturn, and all of them have questions. So here with some answers are our financial consultant, Ray Martin, early show medical correspondent, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, and social worker, Kimberly Agresta. Good morning to you. Good morning, Maggie. Good morning, Maggie. morning to our panel. Good morning to our audience. Let's get right to you. We are eager to hear your stories, take your questions. Let's begin with Max Kramer. What is your question for Ray? Um, my question is, what kind of signs should we be looking for to tell if the economy is turning around? You know, we've had to learn about the three R's in school, but now we're having to learn about the fourth, recession. You need to see confidence improving. People need to feel confident that we're nearing a bottom and, it, and things will go up. So confidence indexes that you hear on the news and reporting uh, to see there. And, and you'll know when your parents talk about it. You'll know when you talk about this in school, banking, financial sector, housing, and unemployment. Uh, and unfortunately, it's gonna, gonna take a while. What is your question for Kimberly? Um, I was just wondering, uh, do you think the, ch the children of the recession will be more resourceful as adults? I do, actually. I think that young adults of today have not had to deal with a lot of the issues that you're currently faced with in this economy. And for instance, there's a lot of instant gratification for them where I think that you've had to delay a lot of that. And so you'll make wiser choices in how you spend your time and your money. I want to know if us being in a recession, would it lead to like being in a depression or do you think it will get better? Yeah, uh, the leadership in this country and the business leadership, more importantly, uh, feels that we're not headed for a Great Depression. But this is the toughest recession that generations have seen since the Great Depression. Uh, my question for you is, I have some family and friends that don't have health insurance. And with the emergency rooms being more crowded, um, what can they do if they get sick? That's such an important question. I think we hear a lot uh, in the media today about people using emergency rooms f instead of going to a regular doctor. And that's obviously not what we want to be using emergency rooms for. I think if you don't have access to a regular doctor because your, your family's health care or insurance has lapsed, if you know a clinic or know a physician and you're not able to actually pay for the visit or pay for the health care, but you can reimburse the doctor or the clinic in another way and you can say you know what my, I own a landscaping business I can do landscaping if you can see me for my annual checkup because the last thing you want to do is let your medical care your health care lapse to the point where you are sicker and therefore your needs both financial and medical are going to be worse. Lee I know that you're going through a tough time because your dad lost his job as a stockbroker recently what's your question for Kimberly? Um, my question is that Mostly today with all these hard times, a person's mindset isn't very positive or optimistic mm -hmm. about the future. Um, what's your advice to us to keep it more on the bright side? What can we think about to keep our thinking more positive? I think that, you know, in good economic times, it's very easy to be positive and things are going well, our pockets are full. And during times like this, it can leave us frightened and vulnerable. And some of the things that we can do again are to reach out to other people. Um, our family would be the ultimate source to turn to, and our community as well. You know, it used to be that family finances and economics was adult stuff, and now we're finding out that you kids, you're not kids, you're young adults yourselves, and you're really becoming interested in this too, and it affects you. Being open in the family about this is our financial situation in our family. This is our income, these are our expenses, this is how it works, and this is where it's not working, and how can we all together make decisions? I think a lot of parents try to protect their kids by not having that conversation, so I'm curious, just show of hands, how many of you want your parents to tell you what's going on, even if it's not so great news? Everybody, everybody. Parents, Absolutely. you know, they can handle it. And you don't have to give it all up. You don't have to put the stress on them, but, but fill them in. Thank you all so much. Thank you to our panel of experts as well, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, Ray Martin, and Kimberly Agresta. We're going to continue the conversation on the Internet, so be sure to go to earlyshow.cbsnews.com because we're just getting started.